Welcome back. So our robot is looking a little bit different now um, and I'm just going to talk through sort of the updates I've done since the last video. Obviously the first change I made, well first update really, is to go through the rest of the limbs, um, add in those extra joints uh, to help with the deformation, um, add in the ribbons, uh, so everything is brought up to date and everything is also now skinned. So as you can see we can move the arm around, we've got a nice angular bend in the elbow there. We've also got the option of adjusting uh, how the upper arm and lower arm deform as well. If I just change that to object instead, that's better. So you see we've got lots of extra options when it comes to animating to make this a lot more sort of fluid and dynamic and cartoony in a way. I've also done the same with the spine. So as you can see there, we can tweak and adjust that as well as animate it like so. And the hips down here. So now this guy is pretty much, he's all skinned and he's pretty much ready to just go in and start animating with it. Can move his head around. Got the controls up here. So there you go. So once I'd gone through and I'd updated the limbs and the spine and attached them all and weighted them all to the key joints, again, using these um, selection sets so that I could easily select those key joints when I was skinning to just the legs or just the spine and the head, you know, etc. So that helped me to then skin everything. And we're at the stage where we are now. So on top of that, a lot of the updates I've done since the last video are just cosmetic really. And they're just there to help the animator, um, help them to identify what controls they're using, uh, which side of the body they're going to be uh, animating and so on. Just the whole thing is just to make the li make life easier for the animator. So to begin with, I just went in and changed some of the icon controls. And all, all I did to do that is just go into the attribute editor, select the control, go into the transform node, under display, bound, um, drawing overrides, just make sure enable overrides is on, and then just change the color down here. So you could change it to whatever you want. So in this instance, the animator will know that the left side is always red, the right side of the robot is always yellow, and all the controls down the center are always green. So it's just make, making it a little bit easier for them to just quickly pick those controls that they want. Particularly if they're working from the, the side view, uh, maybe they're working in wireframe, or you know, if it's in sort of an orth orth orthographic view, you know, it's a bit more difficult to determine which side the icons are. See, I could select that there. If these were both yellow, I wouldn't know which was left or which was right. But because I've added those colors in, I know instantly which icon I can pick. What I've also done is adjusted the hierarchy uh, slightly, just so that we can add in this sort of master control. And what this will allow us to do is just pull and move the um, robot around anywhere. Again, so the animator can position him you know, ready for animation. Uh, but to do that, I had to adjust the hierarchy slightly. Before, we had a robot group, but then everything was underneath that group. So if I just select these and move them up under the control, just so that we can demonstrate. So previously, we had the robot group and these controls underneath. All I've done is added an icon in between them and then parented everything to the icon. So we're basically moving the icon rather than the group. Now the problem we have is if we move the icon, see we start getting uh, elements that are offset from other elements and that's because we have the skin which is being deformed by the joints which is then being deformed by other things and you know it sort of builds up like that. So we're moving this which in turn is moving the skeleton which in turn is moving the models 
So, you know, well, to put it easy in, in an easier way, the curve is moving all of these, but then the skeleton is also moving the models. So we've got an offset from there. And then we've also got the deformers in the scene, which are being moved as well. So then we've got an extra movement on top of that. So what we need to do is we've got our main control. If I just set that back to zero so that we position it back where it should be. We've got our master control, which is the only control that we need. So we just need to pull things out from under that, which we don't need the master control to deform. And as you saw there, we don't need the skeleton, the models or the deformers. Because the controls are controlling the skeleton and the skeleton is controlling the deformers. We also have the systems in here for the arm. You know, so it's it's quite complicated. So what I would suggest, if you're not sure, go through. So let's move skeleton out. Try that one. If we move it, so it's still doing that. Let's move the model out. So let's try deformers. So there, and that's got it. It's the deformers. So what we could then do is maybe let's try putting the skeleton back in. See, that's okay. So maybe we could put the models back in. No, we've got an offset there. So just by a little bit of experimenting, we can add in that extra control there. Oops. And that allows us to move the character around. And obviously we just needed to make sure the deformers and the models weren't included in that group. Now having this icon as well, it also acts as a global control, much like when we created these icons for the hands, uh, for the arms and the legs. These acted as a global control for that particular limb so that we can switch between IK and FK um, and do uh, edit all these deformers. Now we've got this control. This can act as a global control for the whole robot. And as you can see here, I've added a couple of extra attributes. And all that's going to do is hide elements that we don't want the animator to touch but also allow them to be easily made visible if needed so we've got the skeleton and all that's going to do that's just going to make the base skeleton visible and then we've also got deformers so that's just going to turn those deformers on and off just in case you need to check them and because we move them out of that group we can see the deformers there they're not following which is exactly as we need it but you could add anything else onto there. You could add in mesh visibility. So maybe the model. So let's, yeah, let's just do that now. Let's go to uh, modify, add attribute. Um, we'll add an attribute called models. We'll set it as a Boolean. So we've just got on and off. Click OK. Then we can go to general editor connection editor so this has our main attribute on reload left models and we know our models are in this group so it's nice and easy we just connect that to the visibility so there let's turn off the deformers so now we're just left with the uh, models uh, with the just the control sorry we can turn the geometry on and off like so you know so you could add in if you wanted to you could even put in left arm left side controls and make them invisible or visible right side controls or even central controls so you can go as far as you like with that but having that master control at the root not only helps with the position but you then you can add on lots and lots of sort of global attributes another thing we could do if you're if we're animating like so maybe 99 percent of the time these controls aren't going to be used so maybe what we could do is just use again use the arm global control and we could just go uh, let's have a look so modify add attribute and just like we did with the deform sort of separator we created there I'm just going to create some underscores 
like so. Um, set that as an enum. Get rid of blue. And then we'll just call this viz. Add that. So now everything underneath here is to do with the visibility. So I'm just going to lock that. So let's just add an attribute, another attribute, uh, a Boolean again, and we'll call this um, tune controls. So we can add that. And then we go again, go into the connection editor, window, general editors, connection editor. I mean, you can obviously do this in the node editor as well. Go to our tune controls and then we select these icons because these are the ones that we're going to make visible and invisible. Go to reveal selected. So what we want are the offset groups. We don't want the aim groups, we want the offset groups instead. You could just do it on the icons themselves, I guess. Reload right and again we'll just connect that to those visibility controls, visibility attributes. And there you can animate nicely with just using the IK and the FK, but then if the animator feels the need to use those tune controls, you can just go in, turn them on, and then they're there for them to work with. So you could do that for the, uh, the right arm and the legs and also the spine. But that sort of brings us up to date now with this, uh, with this rig. So, so far we've gone through two parts of this uh, course. And we've got quite a nice rig at the moment where on the surface it looks quite simple you know to the animator they've got minimum controls to work with and it looks quite an easy rig to just pick up and pull around but then you've got this hidden depth of these extra flexible sort of ribbon based controls which give you that flexibility for those um, extreme poses and the tune controls so all that's left to do at this stage is just to go through and just double check that everything is locked off and everything is hidden that the animator is not supposed to touch. Um, so for example, that r robot group, if they accidentally select that, then they're going to end up breaking the rig. So we could just go in and uh, lock and hide selected. So then they can only control the visibility and nothing else. So that's not going to break the rig then. We also just need to go in and double check if I switch those controls back on. All these extra groups, the aim groups, the offset groups, you know, that we've added so far, just make sure to go in, lock and hide selected. It just means if, I, if the animator's animating like this and they accidentally press up they pick walk up and they're accidentally selecting the offset group they can then move that around and if they've got auto key set on they could be keying the group not the control you know and then that could cause problems and break the rig further on so just to prevent that just take you know maybe half an hour lock and hide selected just go through all the groups and just do that that just protects you and it protects them as well. So I think we're pretty much done with this, with part two of this course. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned a lot while working your way through it. Feel free to take this version of the uh, robot and start playing around with him, animating him, uh, do whatever you want with him. And look out for the third and final part of this series where we're gonna take what we've built so far and we're going to enhance him further. Um, but you'll have to wait and see sort of what we're going to do with that um, in, the, in the next part. So goodbye for now, and uh, I'll see you later. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if you have any questions and tell me what future videos you would like to see. And why not say thanks and also earn exclusive rewards with a small donation via my coffee page. As always, remember to like this tutorial and subscribe to my channel. 
And remember to hit that bell icon so you're kept up to date with notifications on future videos and posts. This is Ant CGI signing off and I will see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.